Have you ever had a dream that you knew was important, but you just couldn't quite remember the details? I'm one of those people who doesn't dream very often, but when I do, I want to know what that dream was about, and it's regular that I can't remember anything. You know, from that moment when you are just not quite asleep to where you've actually woken up, you might know you had that good dream, but you just can't remember the details, and oftentimes those details kind of feel important. Well, there once was a king who had a very similar kind of experience. This king had a dream, and he really wanted to know what the dream was about. He felt like this dream was critically important, and so he called together all of his wise counselors to help him interpret the dream, but he wouldn't tell those counselors what the dream was. And these wise counselors were completely stumped. They were perplexed. How could they interpret a dream when they weren't told what the dream was? But the king refused to tell them about the dream. Perhaps he couldn't remember it himself. And the whole court seemed unable to be able to help. That is until one man, one man asked his friends to pray. And when his friends prayed, he was given the gift of the vision to know that dream and then to interpret that dream. And here is what the dream was. The king's dream was one where he saw a huge statue. And the statue's head was made of gold, the chest and the arms of silver, the thighs of bronze, the legs of iron, and the feet, a mixture of iron and clay. That statue stood tall and strong until there was a stone that was cut out and was hurled at the statue. It hit the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed it. And the statue came tumbling down and it too was smashed and scattered into tiny pieces that blew away in the wind. Now the dream was interpreted to mean that all the great kingdoms of the earth will one day fall that they will all be replaced by this huge stone that became a mountain that covered the entire earth. Now, why do I bring up this dream about this king? Because, of course, Jesus is referencing that dream in today's gospel. This dream comes from the book of Daniel. And here in this moment in the gospel, Jesus recalls a two different passages, one from Psalm 118, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and one from the book of Daniel, where God replaces the kingdoms of the earth with a massive stone that covers everything. Jesus says these two things after a parable of a horrible vineyard story where people go and kill the owner's servants, including the servant's own son. The people listening to Jesus at this time likely didn't really understand what this parable meant. And so Jesus points this out very clearly. He draws a straight line between the stone that the builders rejected and the stone that will crush the kingdoms of the earth and replace everything draws that straight line right to him. And the people listening are either inspired or scared. They're either hopeful or they are insulted. Because in this moment, Jesus recalls that what God is doing on earth is something that will remake everything they know, something that will change everything that they believed in, something that will change the world forever and for good in total. And I think this is a message we really need to hear right now. See, we are being called by Jesus into a kingdom. We are being called into the kingdom that he began to establish thousands of years ago. And this call is something that is really critically important for us right now, because we're in a period of time that feels totally unmoored. We seem to feel like everything is shifting around us every day, even by the hour. And that kind of shifting is unsettling. We are bombarded with stories every day that are meant to divide us. 
with statements meant to confuse us, with ideas meant to make us fear one another. But I think it's important for us to hear Jesus' call today to resist whatever the earth is doing, what the world is doing, what people in power are doing to try and divide us, because we are called to be unified in Christ. We are called to be connected and unified one to another in this great kingdom building that Jesus started so long ago. But you see, even though what unites us in Christ is stronger than what divides us in the world, this stuff is really hard to resist. The worldly powers are hard to resist. This past week, I was talking with a new staff member here at St. Michael, our director of the St. Michael Episcopal School, Nietzsche Fitzgerald. She is new this year, and she's wonderful. And she is in charge of a school in the middle of a pandemic. Can you imagine starting at a new school as the head of a school after quarantine and having to open this school thoughtfully and carefully when you don't even really know everybody yet? Incredibly difficult. And yet, She's here with a smile, with a positive attitude, with a hopeful message every day. And so I checked in with her this past week and I said, how are you doing? And she paused and she thought for a minute and she said, you know, I am actually okay because for the first time I am in a job where we get to pray every day. And she said, I could not get through all of this if I didn't begin my day with prayer if we weren't able to pray together and ground ourselves in that kind of identity. And I thought, how simple is that? Prayer. It's something I take for granted because I get to start meetings in prayer. But my guess is that most of you may not start your work day in prayer. You may not gather with your colleagues and pray. And so we need a little bit of that prayer grounding and rootedness on our own. Because you see, it's hard to resist the world. It's hard for us to resist the pressures and the temptations that the world puts on us to pull us apart from one another and to pull, pull us apart from this kingdom building work that we commit ourselves to. This week is week four in our discipleship series. This week is the middle of this discipleship series where we are trying to help one another, where St. Michael is really trying to be a part of your every day, not just occasionally, not just on Sundays, not just when convenient, but something that grounds us, roots us, gets us going every day in the right direction. I hope that you've been taking advantage of our daily podcasts. I hope that you have been writing along in the journals that we mail to everyone. And if you don't have one, we have them here at the church for you. I hope that each day you are relying on your church community to help you begin in a way that keeps us grounded and rooted in what unifies us in Christ. The discipleship takes good habits. Discipleship is not just something we can think through. Discipleship is something that we have to do. Remember to pray. Remember to think and learn about God and then live like the kingdom is coming to fruition right now. To live like you are part of the team that is helping to raise up God's kingdom here on earth right now. See, we need each other a lot more than the world tells us. I need you. And we need each other to be the kind of people God created us to be, to be the kind of change in the world we hope to see. What we do here in this church is not just nice or good. What we do here is transformative. What we do here is important. What we do here takes investment from all of us. In this discipleship series, I hope that you have been playing with this idea of investing your time and your talent and your treasure, investing yourself so very deeply, pouring yourself into a community that will help make us all 
better. Make us all more into the kind of people that God created us to be. Especially now, being reminded that when Jesus came, Jesus began a process of kingdom building that is meant to change the entire world for good and forever. And I want to be a part of that work. And I want you to be a part of that work too. Today and each day, you are being called into a new life. You are being called into new habits that will help continue to transform you from the inside out to make you, make us into the people that God hopes we will be. It is critical that we resist being divided. It is critical that we resist all of the negativity in the world. It is critical that today and every day, we take time to recommit ourselves to this path of love. That under the umbrella of Jesus' love, we know that God will turn all things to the good. We will be light in the darkness. We will be hope for the hopeless. We will be care for those who are weak. We will be words of freedom to those who feel bound up in this world when we work together with God's grace, with Jesus inside of us, we can work to change this world and build the kingdom. Today, you're being invited to commit and recommit and invest and to create habits that help you become more and more part of that sacred work. Join your St. Michael family in doing more this year, more next year, more every day to help bring about God's kingdom now. Amen.